Hey guys, welcome to the next lesson in the Limitless course on productivity and discipline. If you haven't seen the previous lessons, we are about halfway through the course, so definitely go and check those out. I've got links in the info card and the description. Make sure that you subscribe so that you get notified for new videos, click the bell icon. So let's get into it. The five best tools to help you with your productivity and discipline. And the first one is something called Toggle. It's a very simple tracker for tracking your time. Now, the great thing with Toggle, it's, it's free, very easy to use, it's a great mobile app. I use Android uh, and also use it on my MacBook. And basically what it does is it allows you to track the time that you're spending on different tasks. One of the things that you wanna do, and we will be covering this in a future video on this course, is being a scientist measuring things. And Toggle allows me to do exactly that. Every single time I'm doing a task, even like right now, I track it using Toggle so that I can see in a given week what percentage of my time exactly did I spend, you know, editing YouTube videos, making YouTube videos, getting on calls with potential people that we may work with, having team meetings, doing strategy. So I can see very quickly if I'm struggling with, say, for example, marketing or the website isn't getting done or there's a particular area that I'm not getting the results I want, I can quickly look at, well, how many hours did I spend on it? How long did that actually take? And it helps me to just be more aware of how long things actually take, because we are very bad at measuring, as I'm sure you know, how long things will take. There may be meetings that I thought, you know, will take an hour, but actually the amount of time needed was two hours. And so, it gives me that immediate feedback loop of knowing how long a project takes. The great thing as well, as you can see in this little clip here, is that you can categorize things according to projects. So you can break things down and, and split your projects up and see where your time was spent, because it is a commodity, over the course of the weeks and months. And you can use that data to inform you in making better decisions going forward. The next one that I'm showing you here is the habit sheet. Now, this is something a friend of mine uh, has created and it's basically a very simple way of tracking your habits on a day-to-day -day basis. This is an example I've created. So you've got your morning routine here, you've got the middle of the day and the end of the day. And what happens is over the course of the day, you would mark an X for a habit completed properly, a forward slash for kind of half-assed attempt, half completed, and a dash for not completed. And the other thing that the habit sheet is really good at doing is helping you to rearrange things because I like having the correct order. And the other thing that's really beneficial here, as you can see as I'm messing around with it, is you can change the weighting of each habit. So let's say, for example, my priority is to improve my ability to play chess every single day and I think that's one of my most important habits I'm focusing on. Well, I can give that habit more importance. So the overall score at the bottom is going to go higher or lower depending on whether I stay on track with that habit. I've been using the habit sheet for quite a number of years now on and off, but very consistently recently. And it's something that I just find helps me to get that feedback loop again of particular patterns throughout the day. I normally do an analysis of my habit sheet for that week. So I can see, you know, around the afternoon in this example that I'm showing you here, I keep, you know, falling off track. So I know that one of the things that I need to do and uh, an adjustment that I need to make is not have my most important habits in the afternoon, for example, and move that around, see if it works better and I'm more consistent if I do it later in the day, earlier in the day, and you get the idea. So there's loads of different ways you can use this. I've seen quite a few different templates. There is a great community as well out there, a free Facebook group that you can join and definitely go and check that out. The next tool that I really like to use is study music and I'm going to link a one hour playlist that I've created on the channel right here and what I've done is created four videos of 25 minutes each. So let's say I'm sitting down to focus for an hour and I've created a playlist of study music chilled kind of relaxed music, just instrumentals, nothing too heavy, just to get me relaxed, to engage my senses in terms of the auditory information I'm bringing in. 
so I can just focus on a task. And I normally have this playing in the background while I'm working. And what you'll see here is there's a very useful timer that I've put in here that lasts for 25 minutes and counts down so that you can set a 25 minute timer, let the music play so you know when the music stops, you can take a quick break if you want and move on to the next one. And there's countless other playlists out there that you can obviously check out. There's a link in the description to the one that I've created on my channel. So that's one of my favorite tools to use when I'm studying, working, and even sometimes, you know, when I'm reading or writing or meditating as well, I like having music on in the background. Again, just to create that cue, we're gonna be talking about habits in one of the next video lessons coming up and how we can use cues, so triggers, to create a behavior that we want. And one of my key favorite ones is having these playlists. We all know about creating to-do lists. That's a really important thing. And I mentioned in one of the previous video lessons, which if you haven't seen already, definitely go and check out, about the importance of brain dumps, taking information from your head, not getting overwhelmed, and putting it on a piece of paper so that you don't have to try and worry about remembering things. And a really good tool that I like using sometimes is Get Plan. What it allows you to do is you create your to-do list, but very often what happens is it stays there. You don't actually schedule when you're gonna do which task. And the great thing here is it's connected to your calendar. So you can create a to-do list as you can see in the example here, and then just drag it over. So for example, I've got this task here. Let's just say it takes two hours for me to complete. It's quite a big chunky task. So I know I wanna start my morning with this. I wanna get the most important thing done first. So normally what I will do on a Sunday is list everything I need to do and just do that you know, within about 15 to 30 minute max. Cause I don't wanna to spend too much time overthinking it. And then I'll schedule the next day or at least you know, two or three days in advance. Now I've done different things, different experiments where I've tried a week Sometimes, you know, that works. Sometimes it's too far ahead for me to anticipate. You know, things may take a bit longer. So I like leaving myself that buffer. And what this allows me to do is eliminate the white space in my calendar. The quickest way to avoid procrastination and the fastest, most effective way to be more productive is to schedule time in your calendar. So when you look at it, you see, I'm not actually free on a Thursday afternoon because I know I need to get this task done. And sometimes what can happen is you fall into that trap of looking at your diary and thinking, it's cool, I don't really have anything on right now, I don't need to do anything. But actually, when you look at your to-do list and you schedule it and you see the week as I'm showing you here, you're very busy and there's a lot that you need to get done. The other thing that Get Plan allows you to do, which is very effective, is to actually see realistically, can you get that to-do list done in the amount of time you want to? And it gives you that feedback loop again of, not trying to do too much with the limited time, the limited energy, and the limited resources that you have. Now, the final one is Scrum, and I'm gonna cover this in the next video lesson, but I use a tool called Trello, which again allows you to create cards and lists. Uh, the next video lesson will help you to make more sense of how to get the most out of Trello, but the simple fact is, you can use it to create cards. And I would suggest you use a Kanban methodology here. So basically, to keep it simple, you have four columns. Coming up, in progress, on hold, and done. And at the beginning of the week, you write all the things, you create a bunch of cards related to all the things you need to get done in the coming up column, which is also called the backlog. And then what you do, you pick three max, I normally go with one, which you move to your in-progress column. And the aim of the game is to move it to the end, to done. And a lot of teams, including us at Revolution Hive, we use this so we can see where we are in our projects. Now you can use this if you're studying as a student, you know, I wish I was taught this at school. You can use it if you're running a social action campaign, a small project, you know, even your household chores. And all you need to do is keep updating your coming soon column, Make sure you don't have more than one to three things in your in-progress thing. And all you do is focus on just moving those one to three, th three things to the done column. So those are the five tools that I use the most. Now I've tried loads of different things, 
but there's probably stuff that I've missed out. So tell me in the comments below, what did I miss? What are the tools that you like using that you think more people should use and why? If you liked this video lesson, make sure that you like the video so it gets further up, more exposure in the search and make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out on future videos. I can't stress this enough because you won't see it otherwise unless you've clicked that bell. If you wanna know more about that productivity technique that I'm gonna cover in the next video and make sure you use this stuff. So those are the five things that I like to use. See you in the next video, peace.